Well, I'll be. Just as Pixar made a horrible statement along the lines of favoring sequels and spinoffs over autobiographical stories, which will get its own video very soon, a sequel to one of their most beloved films of the 2010s is actually pretty darn great. Yep, I said it, Inside Out 2 is a great sequel. Was it on the same level of emotion or storytelling as the first movie? Not really, but did it manage to expand the world of this film in an interesting way without ripping off the first movie like I initially thought it would? Yeah, I'd confidently say so. I still vividly remember watching Inside Out 1 in theaters back in 2015, and to this day it remains one of my absolute favorite Pixar movies not just in the 2010s, but in general. Everything about this film is perfect to me. The characters, the animation, the score, and especially how captivating and emotional the story is. The more I rewatch this film, the more things add up with how much the emotions story connect with Riley so fluently, and the extremely powerful emotional core and message this movie brings to the table just makes this film all around perfect for me. And up there with what most people consider Pixar's greatest like Toy Story or The Incredibles or WALL-E. Because I loved the first movie so much, I was cautiously optimistic about what they were showing in the trailers and promotional material for the sequel. On one hand, I, I did like the concept and design of the new emotions like anxiety and envy that were shown, but on the other hand, I was a little nervous that this would be another Incredibles 2 situation, where the plot would just be a rehash of the first movie with minor additions thrown in there just to cash in on a franchise that everyone loves. So thank goodness that this movie was the opposite of what I anticipated. Yeah, this movie is a little guilty of reusing a handful of elements from the first movie, such as the events that play out, and I think the score was reused. I could be wrong on that part, but that doesn't matter because the score in this film is a banger whether it's an old or new track. The new track isn't as good as the one in the last film, but there were a few tracks that made me cry alone still, so that's saying something. But aside from those small negative things that hold the movie back from being perfect, everything else in this movie is just amazing. I think it's no secret that the visuals in this movie look incredible, and once again remind everyone why Pixar is just top tier when it comes to animation and visualizing their films. They even try out a few new styles which I don't even remember being in a Pixar movie when it came to certain characters. At a few select points, there's this 2D animated character that is supposed to resemble a preschool show that Riley still secretly likes, and there's also this video game character that looks like he's from a Wii game, and while it may not be a Gwimbly in terms of how creative he is, I still enjoyed the times where he was on screen. Speaking of gags, this movie may just be funnier than the first one. The moments where the 2D preschool character starts breaking the fourth wall as if he's talking to the kids, which annoys the emotions, is just so charming and hilarious. The moment where Joy just snaps and goes on a tangent about how she's the only positive one in the group was really well done, and it was probably one of the funniest moments from a Pixar movie in recent years. Even though there are some repeated locations from the last movie, the sequel does a great job of expanding the world of Riley's mind. I like the river full of food that changes depending on what she's eating. I also think the place where she keeps her darkest secrets is well thought out. The scene where Joy and the gang are yelling over the sarcasm to try and get help was also pure genius, and definitely one of the funniest moments in the entire film. However, the most important location in this film has to be the place where all of Riley's beliefs are held. This is where the animation just pops off, and its concept and major purpose it plays throughout the course of the film are just all around smart and beautiful. When it comes down to the true main character, Joy, I really like how she is portrayed in this movie. She does have her rare entitled moments, but her character growth from the last movie and even in this one was on full display in my eyes, and seeing her struggle to adapt with the new emotions like anxiety after being with sadness, anger, disgust, and fear for 13 years was executed just so well. It led to a lot of symbolic moments where she tries to intervene in times where she is not needed, leading to an ultimate conflict of the film, where the original five are thrown out of headquarters because Anxiety believes they don't fit in with Riley's new lifestyle. This eventually leads to a lot of intense and strong character moments where both Joy and Anxiety come to terms with questioning what's really best for Riley. 
Because of this factor alone, it makes anxiety one of the most interesting emotions out of the current nine that are in the franchise. The other three, Envy, Ennui, and Embarrassment, don't really play much of a crucial role in this film, but their design and personality were still charming enough to make me like their addition to the film. However, Anxiety is probably the perfect example of a main antagonist that the audience can question if, if she really fits that status because of the moments where she comes to terms with her impact on Riley. All of these factors affect Riley in a way that isn't really as impactful as the first film, but still connect with people at her age and people who have experienced this trauma before in their lives. And that's just the best thing about Pixar movies in general. You don't necessarily have to be the main character's age or physical appearance in order to connect with their feelings. That's why movies like Up, Ratatouille, The Incredibles, Finding Nemo, Coco, the Toy Story films, the Cars films, Monsters Inc. and Monsters University, etc. have a huge mass appeal across all audiences. Kids would be watching these movies because they have fun and creative worlds that would get their imagination stirring, while also teaching great morals to them. Meanwhile, the adult audience could appreciate and really take in the brilliant storytelling, super smart dialogue, beautiful artistry, and the strong core emotion of most of these films. You may not have had a similar situation to the main character in said film you watch, but the movie still draws you in and gives you a sense of feeling for what these characters are experiencing. It's what makes these fantasy worlds feel so real, and that's just the magic of Pixar. While Inside Out 2 may not be a top tier Pixar film for me, it was still an amazing experience that I am begging you to check out. A very solid 9 out of 10. This movie may not be as strong emotionally, but it still is very dang strong and incredibly written where I can confidently say that this is a worthy addition to the Pixar library. Anyways, please go watch this movie in theaters right away and make sure it hits $1 billion in the box office so Pixar can hopefully change their minds when it comes to focusing on less original content and because it's just another instant classic for them. And also, it's very important to keep calm and value all of your emotions. Thank mm -hmm. you.